Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Guys, what do I got here? Broken string. What do you do when you break a string midpoint? I'm going to tell you. Stay tuned. All right, so you're hitting a forehand or backhand and your string just snaps right in the middle of your point. What do you do? Do you call a let? Do you stop the point? That's why I have my man, Coach Rob, with me today. Coach Rob, what are the rules of if you break a string in the middle of a point? So you have to play the rest of the point with that broken string. And the best way to do it is to try to make the point as short as possible. So sometimes if you notice you break the string right uh, when you hear it, take the next shot and just try to hit a winner, try to rip it. You probably have enough tension left for one more shot with some control. If you can't do that, get to the net, chip it, come in, try to end it with a volley, you know, make the point as short as you can. And hopefully you uh, came equipped with your backup racket and uh, then switch rackets when the point is over. Right. So have you guys ever watched a match? I mean, it happens pretty rarely nowadays, even on tour. But I remember growing up and even sometime last year when I saw a string break, the guy just suddenly charged the net. They just charged right. the net for like basically no reason. I didn't know that he broke a string, but um, he just basically started coming forward to try to end it win or lose i mean do or die you got one two shots max right. before um your next shot if you hit the strings is going to hit the fence because the tension because of the tension loss right so what would you advise somebody to do like like straight up would straight, you say go to the net straight go to the net right okay. if you're deep in the court maybe try to rip a winner and then rush or chip and come in um, something that, you know, you like Harry said, you've got two, maybe three shots left. If you can get a volley, something short where you don't, you know, you can try to control it. Um, that's about, you know, that's, that's about it. You and do. you're coming to the net and pretty much you're going to walk over and get a, get you. You're just making the trip to your bag a little bit shorter. Right. Um, I've seen people actually do play defense on that too, where they just send it up in the air. Right. And just play, they should keep sending it up in the air for overheads or something like that just to see what happens. Right. You can try just to hit, you know, chip lobs and just throw it up there high and hope the guy misses it. And um, that's a huge win. If you can win a point when you broke a string, it's a good feeling because sure. the other guy is going, I can't believe I lost a point with the guy's got no tension in his racket and he broke a string. Right. That's pretty demoralizing for your opponent. Let's turn this around to the other side then. So you just see your opponent just break a string. What do you do? Right. Make them play. Make them hit the ball. Make them hit the ball. Make them, you know, scramble. Try to keep it deep so it's harder for him to attack. Um, you know, he may not even know he broke the string. So, you know, just keep the ball in play. Make them move. And um, hopefully they'll sail one long as the tension um, uh, comes apart with the racket. Right. So perfect. Guys, once you realize you broke that string, right, you got to take aggressive, evasive action, okay? So you got MIG on your tail, right? Move your behind, all right? Coach Rob, what did we just do? Uh, so when we broke the string, we chip and charged. We came in right away, tried to knock it off with a volley or an overhead. We also did a few where we were setting up and like, oh man, we broke it. And we just try to haul off and rip a winner. Some successful, some not so successful. Um, but the idea is just make the point end short. Hopefully you can get one on your side uh, to be victorious because it's great feeling to win a point when you've broken your string. Right. A lot of the times after you realize it, your opponent hopefully maybe didn't realize it. So you're gonna have, you're gonna take them by surprise. Right? right by charging the net for no reason and then they're going to be like oh what's this what's this dude doing what's this guy doing right so hopefully you get a free point out of that and hopefully it's not a crucial point that you have to win that 
particular point with. Uh, so Coach Rob, anything else? Make sure you carry two rackets whenever you're playing a tournament or a match because you sure don't want to get defaulted because you're out of equipment. Um, and not a lot of times is your opponent going to be nice enough to let you borrow his racket. You know, the guy who gives you a racket um, he doesn't really enjoy getting beat by his own racket. Right. So the only way for you to continue playing in like a sanctioned match is for you to get a racket from either your opponent or somebody else. Right. And it ain't going to be your racket. I'm pretty sure about that. So get two rackets, get three rackets or do what I do. Get four rackets. OK, because you never know when this is going to happen to you. All right. So final thing to add to this is if you have a broken string after that point is over, do not continue to use that racket. Coach Rob, what's going to happen if you continue to use that racket? Well, besides the fact you're um, uh, likely to warp it, you got a good chance of breaking it because the tension has all changed around in the frame. So, uh, you know, hit a couple shots, chip and charge, rip it and rush the net, um, and then go put your racket down and get your back up. Right, because it's not going to be great for this racket uh, for you to continue to play with it. Uh, not only that, uh, you will not get a consistent hit with this racket either because think about it this way there's going to be no tension here in these couple of mains if you hit it in that spot you're probably going to hit the fence because it's just going to spring off and just take off so aside from you cracking this racket and having to buy a new one uh, you're never going to get any control with it um, and it's going to be really really unpredictable what's going to happen the rest of your playing or the rest of your match so get your second stick so i want to thank coach rob for hanging out with me and showing us the way on what to do when you break a string in the middle of a point thank you coach rob guys i want to thank my sponsor for this particular show uh racket aid as you guys know uh, I've done a video on Racket Aid before in the past, and they've, they've agreed to sponsor us. So thank you, Cal, over at Racket Aid. I will also link that video to the bottom here. But if you broke your string, just like what I just did, and you don't live by me, and you can't come to me, hey, go to Racket Aid. We'll ship you this box, and there'll be some paperwork in there for you. All you do is you put your racket in the box, ship it out to them with your instructions, and they will ship it right back to you. All right, it's kind of like Grubhub for rackets, okay? Except you can't eat it, but check them out, racketaid.com. Thank you for the Racket Aid for sponsoring this show. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.